Amazon stock was down 50% this year, almost got cut in half. Is now the good time to buy the stock? Welcome to Safety. Today, let's talk about what happened to Amazon stock in 2022, why it fell so much, and more importantly, is now a good time for long-term investors to buy the stock? Great, let's dive in. Let's take a look at Amazon's past five-year stock performance. Until COVID happened in early 2020, Amazon stock has been growing like any other growth stock and then took a brief dip like any other stock in the broader index. Since that time, Amazon stock has significantly outperformed and in fact more than doubled uh, thanks to the rise in e-commerce and the closing of several physical stores during the time Amazon stock took advantage of all that e-commerce trends. Since then, 2022 happened, given the high inflation environment and a looming recession, Amazon stock took a significant beating and fell by almost 50% in that time period. Now Amazon stock is at pre-pandemic levels and it wiped out all the gains that happened during this last two years. Yes, that's right. While all the big tech stocks fell in 2022, Amazon was among the worst performers. Only Meta or Facebook was doing worse than Amazon. And when you compare to the broader market, Amazon significantly underperformed Nasdaq and SP500 by a big margin. So the key question is why? Why was Amazon stock disproportionately impacted in 2022? To answer that question, let's take a look at Amazon's business model. In 2021, Amazon generated $470 billion in top line revenue. Out of that, as we all know, retail is Amazon's bread and butter, contributing 73% of that revenue, followed by Amazon Web Services, uh, who serves to business customers, followed by subscription, contributing 7%, which is like our Amazon Prime fees that we pay, followed by advertising, contributing another 7%. And all of Amazon's business units were under pressure in 2022 because of several reasons. To start with, we have high inflation, as a matter of fact, the highest in the past four decades. And to fight that, the Fed had to raise interest rate aggressively. And because of these, the market or everyone is predicting a recession is coming down the line. Given lower consumer sentiment, individuals like you and I start to spend less on a daily basis, which impacts Amazon's retail business. In addition to that, companies are also reducing their business spending and doing corporate budget cuts, which means lower IT spending and lower advertising spending, impacting Amazon's AWS and advertising business units. And don't forget, Amazon is a global business, getting revenue from all over the world, and a strong dollar doesn't help because when you convert revenue into US dollar, it is a headwind. Last but not least, after two years of above average e-commerce growth, the market is wisely expecting e-commerce to reverse um, post-COVID. And so in 2022, you have this rare combination of events that happen to converge and coincide at the same time, creating a perfect storm that impacts all of Amazon's business units within the same year. This is what's causing the significant and disproportionate decline of Amazon stock versus other big tech stocks. Amazon is a growth company. For any growth company, it is important to understand its year-over-year -year performance of its top-line sales. As long as this number is above zero, that means it's positively growing. And when you see a big spike in the YOY performance or metrics, that means the growth is accelerating. And when you see a dip, that means the growth is slowing down. In this context, let's take a look at Amazon's retail units year-over-year -year sales growth. As a reminder, retail sales accounted for more than two-thirds of Amazon's total sales. As you can see here, before the pandemic hit in March 2020, this unit has been growing on average at a 25% year-over-year rate. But then when pandemic hit, 
sales growth for this unit actually hit its peak in early 2021 as people shop more online. But when the vaccine started to roll out and people started to shop more in person starting early 2021, Amazon's retail sales growth started to slow significantly, hitting a multi-year low in Q1-Q2 2022. Amazon's second biggest business unit, Amazon Web Service AWS, has also been seeing some slowdown in sales growth in 2022. Until 2022, this business unit has been growing more or less at 40% rate annually. However, since 2022, given the high inflation environment and recession fears, companies started to slow down their IT spend, and this contributed to slowing growth of AWS. And now you see AWS and Amazon retail account for around 85% of Amazon's total revenue, and the slowdown of these two business units really spooked investors. Given the slower sales growth in 2022, Amazon's profitability in terms of operating income has been declining in the year. In addition, its free cash flow actually turned negative in 2022. This happened just when investors started to pivot and focus on profitable growth and thus impacting Amazon's share price. Now that we discussed and understood why Amazon stock was tanked so much in 2022 and underperformed. Let's get to the million dollar question. Is Amazon a buy right now, given the recent dip of 50% in 2022? As a long-term investor, I want to believe Amazon is a solid viable company and continue to have a right to win in the future. So just taking a step back, what do you think are main potential threats to Amazon's bread and butter business model, its retail business? To start with, you have the intensifying competition in e-commerce. For example, traditional retailers like Walmart and Target are both investing heavily to build out their own e-commerce offerings as well as underlying infrastructure. And then you have brands like Nike that stop selling from Amazon completely. Also, companies can choose to partner with delivery startups like Instacart to bolster their e-commerce offering. And so as a result, you now have alternatives to shop online other than Amazon.com. Another concern might be Amazon is slow to achieve breakthrough in their online grocery business. Traditional grocers like Walmart, Kroger, Costco, they have a natural advantage of physical store to click and collect, for example. And now, although Amazon has acquired Whole Foods and opened physical full retail stores like Amazon Go, it is still to be seen whether they can successfully scale their online grocery business. Last but not least, there's this concern that Amazon might have overbuilt their infrastructure capacity, especially during the two years of pandemic era when e-commerce has exploded. That said, we do believe Amazon retail has the competitive advantage to win in the long term. Going back to the basics, Amazon is Amazon today because of its optionality, convenience offered to customers. On Amazon.com, you can find 353 million products, basically everything you can think of. To pair that, Amazon runs the largest source of user review and and shoppers trust these recommendations by other users when they select the right product for themselves. Amazon can of course deliver the products for you in a fast and reliable way. They recently offer same day delivery for Prime members. And you can return this product hassle free. To complement all of these, Amazon has invested in food and grocery retail as well by acquiring Whole Foods, launching Amazon Fresh, and opening Amazon Go Store, offering another way for, for consumers to buy their daily essentials. All in, there are no other competitors that can offer this combination of unique offerings. And for competitors to catch up to Amazon, it will require significant investment in time and money to do so. 
To put this in context, Amazon has invested billions of dollars over the years to build out their logistics infrastructure. In 2022 alone, this investment reached 38 billion dollars, and Amazon has done this on a global scale. Yes, you might have heard of competitors such as Shopify investing 200 to 500 million a year to build out their own infrastructure, but this is only a fraction of what Amazon has been investing. And yes, Amazon might have overinvested in their infrastructure, especially during the pandemic, but they have multiple levers to pull in order to monetize the excess capacity. Such as subleasing their warehouses and offering new value-added services that utilize their infrastructure. More broadly, e-commerce is not going to go anywhere. E-commerce, as a percentage of total sales, has been growing continuously and has already reached more than 20% in the U.S. The trend is only going to continue as e-commerce is projected to grow strongly in the future. Amazon is already an undisputable leader in U.S. e-commerce, taking 49% of market share. In fact, 74% or about three quarters of consumers actually start their shopping journey on Amazon. As a result, it's hard for any seller or brand to ignore Amazon as an essential distribution channel. They need to sell on Amazon in order to capture consumer eyeballs and demand. And Amazon is not stopping there. They continue to invest in cutting-edge technology to deliver more convenience to customers and to run their business more efficiently, including robot delivery, drone delivery, and warehouse automation using robotic arms. All in, Amazon has always been at the forefront of retail innovation, and it's been playing the long game. And we believe they have the right to win in the long term. Let's shift gears to Amazon's second biggest business segment, Amazon Web Services. What is your view on AWS' long-term potential? Amazon practically invented the concept and business model of offering computing infrastructure as a service, meaning you offer these services on the cloud so the customers pay for what they consume. Think of any company or any business; they all need basic IT infrastructure to run their operations. So Amazon, as a new e-commerce company, had to deal with a lot of data. So you need storage, you need databases, networking equipment, computing or processing power or servers, and Amazon needed this basic IT infrastructure at a larger scale because being a brand new e-commerce company. In the U.S. at that point of time, they needed to store tons and tons of data about the millions of products that they are selling on the platform, and they are distributing and、uh, storing in their warehouses. So they needed it at a much larger scale. But while tackling with building out, managing, and maintaining this basic IT infrastructure, what they realized was their customers, their business customers, might also be tackling with the same major pain points. End of the day, managing, building out your IT infrastructure is not anyone's core business model. So Amazon came up with this brilliant idea of renting out or providing this IT infrastructure as a service. This infrastructure as a service offering by Amazon has become so successful with its business customers that. Amazon has started to build a range of other value-added services, such as security and compliance. Or if you are a business that needs a web presence or a mobile app presence, you can readily leverage the stack that is made available by AWS and get up and running with your basic e-commerce or basic mobile web presence. In fact, it has become so successful that AWS has garnered around. 1.5 million、uh, businesses as its customers, and in 2021, it generated a whopping 80 billion dollars in revenue. As the first mover in the cloud computing market, Amazon has become the dominant number one player in the market, commanding 34 percent of total market share, which is 10 percentage point more than number two Microsoft Azure and three times the size as number three. Google Cloud. 
and over the years, Amazon has successfully maintained its market shares, while players like IBM and smaller players continue to lose market share. And the cloud computing industry has reached 490 billion in size in 2022. That is half the size of Mexico's GDP and bigger than entire South Africa's GDP. And this industry is just getting started. It has grown at a 26% rate annually in the past five years. And Amazon, as the number one player in the market, is set to benefit from the rapid growth. The three big players in this fast-growing cloud computing market are Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google's GCP. Uh, while Amazon pioneered this concept, Microsoft and Google were quick to follow and introduce their own cloud computing platforms a few years right after Amazon introduced. However, Amazon as the trailblazer in this particular industry, it does have competitive advantage in terms of its geographic availability as well as total number of value-added services. Amazon's AWS solution is so robust that its customer base speaks for itself. For example, the British Secret Service Intelligence, MI6, as well as the US CIA use AWS to host and store the most classified documents. In addition, the Department of Defense of UK and US, as well as US Navy and NASA and International Space Station, they are customers as well of AWS. Think about the robustness and security and reliability that these customers, the government agencies and the spy agencies do require from Amazon. In addition, AWS customers also include companies such as Netflix, ESPN, Airbnb and Twitter, which generate and also have to store and manage all the tons of data that, that they produce. All in. AWS is a clear winner in terms of offering a secure, reliable, and robust solution, in addition to keeping innovating and offering tailored customizable solutions to their target customers. Not only is AWS a clear winner in a large and fast-growing market, it is also highly profitable, contributing to Amazon's total profit. In the past three years, AWS has accounted for at least half of Amazon's total profitability, Especially in the past four quarters, AWS carried Amazon while its other business units operated at a loss. All in, AWS is a growth and profitability engine for Amazon. Let's pivot to Amazon Advertising, Amazon's third largest business segment, which contributes 7% of Amazon's total sales. As the world's largest online marketplace, Amazon.com attracts more than 2 billion unique visitors each month, and sellers are happy to pay Amazon money in order to display their products prominently to attract potential customers. Amazon's ad business has grown so fast, it has become the growth engine for Amazon. In nearly three years' time, the ad business has more than tripled to $32 billion in 2021, that is bigger than the ad revenue for the total newspaper industry globally. With $32 billion in size, Amazon's ad business is now bigger than YouTube and Facebook, and thus successfully disrupting the digital ad duopoly of Google and Meta, aka Facebook. Amazon's ad business has several competitive advantages. To start with, Advertisers can run highly targeted and effective ad campaign on Amazon.com. According to a survey, 74% of consumers use Amazon.com for their product search, and so Amazon can clearly capture this consumer's purchase intent and place relevant ads in front of them at the right time in order to increase the chance of making a sale. Second, Amazon is insulated from the recent anti-tracking measure implemented by Apple's App Store. Unlike Facebook, Amazon does not need app tracking on your phone in order to tell your purchase intent or search intent. They have their own data when you search different products on Amazon.com. 
Last but not least, Amazon Ad is still at its early stage of growth. Right now, most of the ads are run on Amazon.com. Amazon is just scratching the surface in terms of running ads on Amazon's Prime Video Fire TV, which is a cross-platform TV streaming service, Alexa, a home intelligence device, as well as Twitch, an online live streaming platform for video games. Amazon, as we all know, has been an innovator and disruptor. It's embedded within its DNA. For example, bringing e-commerce to scale, redefining how we shop, where we shop, and now Amazon.com is integral to our shopping behaviors. Second, how companies and businesses think of their IT operations and spending. With Amazon Web Services now as a leading vendor that enables businesses to rent, lease their IT infrastructure as a service, another category defining example. Thirdly, where and how product manufacturers and consumer brands advertise. Traditionally, they used to advertise on TV, newspapers, magazines, or websites, but now Amazon.com is a place where they have to advertise. It has become unavoidable. Keeping this tradition and DNA embedded into who Amazon is, it's been investing into several long-term bets, basically investing into the future. For example, Zoox, a company that specializes in developing electric driverless vehicle that specializes in transporting people from point A to point B. Amazon acquired the company for $1.2 billion in 2020, with the goal to redefine the future of mobility. Another example is Twitch, which is a pioneer in online live streaming of video games, which Amazon acquired for about a billion in 2014. So now instead of watching YouTube video, Netflix or TV, people can now go to Twitch and watch other people play video games and engage with the player's life. In fact, Twitch has become, has become so successful, it has 140 million monthly active users, most of them between the age of 16 to 34 years old. And these users spend a total of 22.6 billion hours watching Twitch, matching or exceeding the likes of Netflix, Disney, HBO. And this has translated into financial success. Twitch has reached a revenue of 2.6 billion, which is 10 times as much as six years ago. So all in, Twitch has created a new entertainment category for a new generation with great financial success. Last but not least, let's talk about Project Cooper, an in-house project launched by Amazon about five years ago. The goal of Project Cooper is to launch a constellation of satellites that provide high-speed broadband internet access all over the world, including underdeveloped and remote regions currently have no access to internet. To do that, Amazon is planning to invest more than $10 billion in the next 10 years to launch around 3,300 satellites. At the end of the day, Amazon's success is predicated on consumers' access to internet, and Project Cooper will bring internet access to everyone anywhere, potentially unlocking a new pool of customers that would use Amazon's products and services. To sum it up, we believe Amazon is playing the long game and has the right to win in the long term. Its retail business is already the number one e-commerce player in the U.S. with significant competitive mode, which was built on years of infrastructure investment and innovation. AWS, Amazon literally created the cloud computing category and is the dominant number one player in this large and fast-growing market. Amazon's advertising business has quickly become the third largest digital app player and is well positioned to further expand, serving as another growth and profit engine for Amazon. Amazon is also investing in cutting edge technology to future proof its business and to discover the next growth engine. Last but not least, it's a subscription business. Since launching in 2005, Amazon Prime has attracted a vast and loyal customer base of 200 million members. 
All in, we believe Amazon has been and will continue to be an innovative technology company that disrupts and redraws boundaries across industry lines. Looking at Amazon's valuation, after its share price declined by 50% in 2022, the stock is now trading at 12.7 times on a enterprise value to EBITDA basis. It's actually at the lowest level over the past 10 years and nine times cheaper than its 10 year average at 22 times. In our view, this provides an attractive valuation for long term investors if you can look past the temporary issues and focus on Amazon's long term potential. Analysts seem to agree with our judgment. Vast majority of them rated Amazon stock as a buy. In terms of target price, even after several rounds of price cut, median target price stands at $140 which represents a 65% upside at a midpoint compared to current share price at $85 level. Although there will be uncertainties in the next few months given macroeconomic condition, we do believe that Amazon stock is an attractive buy now for long-term investors. And that's a wrap for today. For more stock ideas, don't forget to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Safety.